and welcome to another episode of Newscast. My name is Sam Healy, and in these videos, we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects, as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today, I ran an Anastir demo with Andrew from Brews and Board Games through Tabletop Simulator on Monday night, and I think you can check it out on his YouTube channel. My wife Jessie and I will be live streaming a two-player game of Anastir on Thursday morning this week, and I'll be doing an Anastir-focused live Q&A on Friday. So keep your eyes open for those. Now we do have a bit more information on a few of our own projects though, so let's get to those. For Solomon Kane today, we have some great news. The Recast Maryland miniature replacements have reached the hub and are currently undergoing some quality checks before being sent out. As a reminder, you don't need to contact us in any way for this replacement mini. It will be sent out automatically to all backers since it was a miscast. For Enchanters today, we have received the white samples for the retail print run of Enchanters and for Darklands, the expansion. As you can see, all of those here. The reprint of the cards and dividers are also being done during this print run, but as we've already produced them once, we won't be getting the white samples of them again. Now, we're also reworking the boxes for the single Kickstarter exclusive decks that we will be carrying on our eShop, but the final design is still forthcoming, so I don't have any pics of those to show you. All in all, though, we're simply trying to exhibit forward progress for you customers. For Super Fantasy Brawl today, we wanted to report that the French replacement cards for round two have reached the hubs and are also currently undergoing some quality checks before being shipped out. So for those of you who are waiting on those, it shouldn't be very long now. As a reminder, you don't need to contact us in any way for these replacement cards. They will automatically be sent out to all backers who purchased a French copy of the game. This is the 100th update of Hell the Last Saga, and we'd like to use this anniversary of sorts to thank you again for your commitment and patience. It's been a long and winding road in many ways, but the final destination is near, folks. The feedback from the playtests the last few months, in addition to having opened our eyes to some final ergonomic adjustments, has been a huge encouragement for us. The enthusiastic feedback in terms of narration and atmosphere has strengthened our resolve to have given ourselves the means and the time necessary to carry out this huge and unique project. Not only was each manifestation of your patience and kindness a driving force for us, but each criticism or question was a constant reminder of the resolve we needed to have. On our monthly tracking chart, you'll notice a modification on Song 12. As you can see, we've decided on a final cut in this final book, dividing it into two scenarios. This modification was necessary to focus the different possible conclusions and to avoid too much divergence in the paragraphs. We hope to present you with a new tracking chart next time, focusing on the completion of the production, packaging, and delivery stages of Wave 1. As for the finalization of the game, the health situation and slot disruptions in the production lines have forced us to shift the production as described in the following ways. In May, manufacturing of the PVC and ABS molds and prototypes will be done. In June, the injection and manufacturing of the miniatures and tokens will be completed. July, we'll see the delivery of printing files to the factory and the processing of those files. And then August through October, we're estimating for the, manu ma the mass manufacturing and packaging of the product. And then November and December, we're estimating, we'll see the de departure uh, and the shipping from China to the hubs. Now, we will, of course, be ever looking for ways to shorten and optimize one or more of these steps if possible. Concerning your questions about the packaging, for example, the well, we have boxes for the sleeved cards and how is the deluxe storage coming along and so forth, uh, the factory will propose solutions that we will share with you at the end of the manufacturing stage of the miniatures, which is currently scheduled for completion in June. 
Concerning the Spanish, German, and Italian translated versions of Wave 2, the three dedicated teams should start the localization and mock-up in June as well. We're waiting to confirm the final details with those partners of ours before giving you an estimated roadmap. Finally, we originally scheduled the close of the Pledge Manager for the end of this month, but we've decided that it will stay open for another month. Now, last time we left you with an enigmatic diagram found in the rubble, and some of you had your imaginations running wild, so we're curious to hear what you think about this. After last week's update, with a dump of all those pictures from the factory, we wanted to update everyone on Wave 2 progress. We've been moving ahead with working on the Wave 2 expansion since we sent all the Wave 1 stuff to the factory. We have finished playtesting for all of the expansions and are currently aggregating feedback from the playtesters. Apart from some typos and symbol clarity that we needed to tweak and the rebalancing of a couple of bosses, things are looking very good. Color of Madness has also received great feedback from our playtesters and has reportedly been a welcome change of pace for them. So we just wanted to make sure that everyone understands that we are still on the move with Darkest Dungeon. If you've not already done so, I'd like to encourage you to check out our Anastir Kickstarter that is currently live and will run until Friday, May 6th. We've just released a couple of awesome updates detailing no less than three of the planned expansions for the game, and they're all off the chain. We've released images and updates for the Primordial Jungles, the Bone Swamp, and my personal favorite, the Kingdom of Stone Hills. Each area revealed includes two new heroes and a ton of content for each new area, including no less than three levels worth of new enemies. My new favorite hero is Einar in the Fog of Revolt expansion. We have a lot more in store for this project, and we're glad to see the stretch goals continuing to fall. There are also some updates about gameplay, the most recent of which explains how the boss enemies will work in the game, and we've shared some thoughts from the designer on how the challenges that face the heroes will change from area to area. It's turning out to be an awesome ride, and it's going to be an even better game. So we hope to see you there before the campaign comes to an end on Friday, May 6th. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions at all or if you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show because he's got the hookup, y'all. As mentioned earlier, I'll be back to normal this week for my two videos on Thursday and Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, so be on the lookout for those too. That's it for today, though. Once again, stay safe and play some games while you're at it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>